Have you ever wondered if you should revise an old video? Let's think about this. First of all, you don't have to dream up a new topic. You can add information that you didn't have before, cut out obsolete information, or try a new approach. Five years ago, I put this video up on YouTube, but I'd like to make some changes to it now that will make your green screen videos 100% better than by following the advice in the original video. Isn't that worth a revision? At the start of 2016, I discovered a tiny loophole in the laws of physics that allows you to get a flawless green screen shoot in a 10 by 10 foot space with a six by six shooting area inside it. It's a big deal because the smallest green screen studios are at least 20 by 20 feet. I'd like to show you the heart of that discovery now, then show you the flaws that were, you know, maybe more acceptable five years ago, then we'll bring this same footage to a much higher level. Now, I want you to pay attention to what I'm going to do next because this is kind of the key to bending reality here a little bit. Watch what happens as I move closer and closer to the green screen. Oh, now I'm being lit. Very, very warm. That's exactly what we don't want to have happen. So I'm just going to walk out in front of the green screen until I'm no longer lit by these lights. There's three ways you can tell. One, you can kind of tell out of your peripheral vision that you're no longer being lit. Two, you can kind of see a line on the floor where that light stops. And three, you can just look here and see that the light is being ended here by the cover of the lighting instrument itself. So as long as you step in front of that, maybe give yourself just another few inches for a margin of error, you can have a perfect green screen. You can have any kind of background that you want as far as the background is concerned. So everything I said about the lighting is true, as you're about to see. But just because you can cut a key with stone knives and bear skins doesn't mean you should. Free is fine if you need it, and it's what I used in that video. But think about it. Your demonstrations of value, which is what your videos should be, are an investment in creating authentic connection with those who can most benefit from what you do. So you get a little spill, a little outline, maybe it's not a big deal, and maybe you can minimize it with enough time and effort. If memory serves, I spent at least an hour on that one. But anyone making just a small investment in their process could cut the time it takes to make a key from an hour to just five seconds and increase the quality of the green screen by at least a hundred percent. I still make all my videos in this same space, the same one I made that one in five years ago, but life is so much better now. Let's look at how this was done before, then we'll look at the new process. So here we are in the original timeline. I used a couple of tools that are built into Final Cut Pro to cut the green out. The keyer and the color board. They're both easy to use, but they don't give you much control over the final product. As you can see, there's a good bit of outline on the moving hand and some on the face. And there's a bit of green spill all around. I actually drew attention to the imperfections in this key by laying in a white background. I got a little cocky, I think. You should never use a black or white background with green screen. Either one makes the stray green pixels show up more. So let's see if we can do something more with this clip now. Let's go to the new timeline. We see a couple of new plugins here. For keying, I'm using Hawaii Keyer, which is just for Final Cut Pro, and it's very talented. It cleans all the digital noise out of the background. It gives you edge tools so you can make those outlines go away. And it gives you finer control over spill, which is where the green reflects back on your face from the front. So if you've lit the scene well otherwise, you can clean up all that stuff super fast. But the other new plugin takes you way beyond just getting rid of spill. It's called Cinema Grade, and it works on Mac or Windows. It lets you adjust the tint, 
contrast, saturation, and brightness. And that's cleaned the scene up quite a bit. But to take it all the way, here's a bonus tip. If you use a 50% gray background instead of white, any stray green pixels get mostly covered up. And now you have a shot that's just about perfect. So if you're careful with your backgrounds, like here and here, no one has to know you shot on a green screen if you don't want to tell them. Not that there's any harm in knowing. My Windows clients get great results with either a robust key or ultra key for Premiere Pro. The thing is, if you've done careful lighting, you deserve to get instant results in your key as the payoff. And you can easily get it with these little tools. So I put links to all these plugins in the description below. I'm not selling them, I just recommend them to my private clients. You know, the original video was shot with this old Sony AX100, proving that you don't need bleeding edge technology to get beautiful results. Just a little investment and a little strategy. So this was my way of revising an original video. I hope you found it helpful on more than one level. That's the best way for a video to work anytime. And that is the way of the visible authority.